you've got to have that, what they call the hook Mm -hmm. and that someone has to see them enough of themselves in it that they want to keep going. Mm -hmm. It's taught me to make every chapter end with some reason why you want to read the next chapter. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. even sentences like that, you know, mm-hmm. read the first sentence, you want to read the second sentence, mm-hmm. you know, that's the goal of the, of the sentence. Each sentence is to provide, you know, make your reader want to read the next one. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Margaret Lashley. Yes, we do. It was great, y'all. Margaret is hilarious. And she writes funny mysteries, uh, funny women's fiction. Mm -hmm cozy adjacent yeah. uh mysteries they're really quirky yes. and funny and anyway she has some just really unique perspectives and mm-hmm. it was a great interview yeah if you're interested in writing something that's not quite um mm-hmm. in the center of a certain genre if you want to write something that's genre adjacent mm-hmm. she is a good person to look to to see how she's done it and yeah, we talk she about has that. done it yeah mm-hmm. yeah talk about covers and following your own path, you know, staying true to your own voice, even though there's lots of things you could do. Like she talks about how she only has one social media platform that she mm-hmm. uses. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just a really good interview. We had a great time talking with her. So that's coming up. Yep. And so we have some, oh, go ahead. We do oh, have new supporters. We, yeah, yeah. Sorry. We have I was... some supporters. So mm-hmm. we got to give them a shout out. Yeah, so yeah. Um, at first we have Lena and she chose the star emoji, the three stars. Mm-hmm. And we have Sheena Ager, and she chose the puppy, which mm, so oh, cute. Stuck up, stuck up for puppies. <laughs> yep. And then we have Sarah, Sarah with an H, with the unicorn emoji. Mm-hmm. And we have Robin Covington uh, with the crown. Mm-hmm. And Carla DeBell with the heart. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Mm-hmm. We just appreciate it. And all our current supporters and past supporters. Mm-hmm. We say it all the time, but we really do appreciate it. It really does show us that you care about what we do and want us to keep doing it. So Yes, it does. And we're just thankful that um, we've got this all set up and you guys can come along and support us. Mm-hmm. It uh, really, it makes our day every time we yeah. see a new supporter. It does. Ooh, yay. <laughs> All right. We so, live smaller. No, I yeah. Mean. Doesn't take much to get us excited. <laughs> when you're a writer in your office all day, it doesn't take much. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you want to talk about, and I agree, this whole yeah. find a way voices thing yes. and Spotify. Wow. Yeah. So talk I'm about sure shockwave you're... going yeah. across the industry. Yeah. I'm sure that if you've been in an author group in the last week or so, you've heard about um, Find Way Voices uh, put out an email that they were going to update their terms of service coming in March. And there was quite a backlash from the Mm -hmm. author community. Yes. And to their credit, they did um, listen to feedback and change the the terms of service. Mm -hmm. So that's what's, that's, what happened in a nutshell, Mm -hmm. but the ramifications of it is that a lot of authors are looking around for other Mm -hmm. choices. Yep. And I am too, to be perfectly honest, Mm -hmm. I'm looking around to see what my other options are Mm -hmm. because I feel like the, the, the terms of service that was originally posted was not something that I could handle. Mm -mm. You know, it was not, it it was not acceptable. Mm-hmm. It's the nicest way to say it. Yeah. And and the fact is that I kind of felt like they just tried to sneak it in. That's you know? that's the bothersome thing about it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the perception from a lot of people mm-hmm. that they just tried to sneak it in. So yeah, mm-hmm. not not cool. Not cool. Yeah. So so um I was I'm gonna post a link to a podcast from Buzzcast. They have an episode, they're more for podcasters. But this week or last week, they had an episode come out about Spotify because Spotify mm-hmm. is 
purchased Find Away Voices, mm-hmm. and they announced last week that they had several shows that were exclusive to Spotify, several podcast shows that mm-hmm. now they're going to release them wide like Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. And so they're talking about that, but then they also talk a lot about Spotify's history. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting because we in the author community, a lot of people were so excited when Spotify bought Find Away Voices. Yep. But the reason I'm posting this link is it gives you some background on Spotify mm-hmm. and how they have their their point of view, it seems to be when they come into a market is they want to grab everything. They want to control it. They, that, that was their whole thing was, you know, podcasting is open source. You can, mm-hmm. as long as you have an RSS feed, you can post it. You can right. create your own content and post it and you're not beholden to a platform. Right. You can't be deplatformed basically. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to make podcasting where you had to go through Spotify. That was their goal, you know? Mm-hmm. And there seems like they're stepping back from that with podcasting. Yeah. And now they're moving into audiobooks. So we love the people at Find Away Voices. The mm-hmm. people there are fantastic, but I feel like they are probably not making these decisions now. No, they're not making these decisions. Spotify is, and they don't. I mean, it, it, it turns out they haven't had a great reputation when it comes to the artists. Our creators, they, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we'll see what happens, but thankfully they did listen to the outcry. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so if you're looking for options, I would say um, I found out that Authors Republic distributes to pretty much all the same places they have a different uh like tos mm-hmm. i believe i have I, i've emailed with them a little bit and they say that if you distribute through authors republic to spotify then your content is under the agreement that they have with spotify it's not the same as if you distribute through final Directly. so mm-hmm. you know there's an option there and then i s- talked to my narrator about it and she recommended Spoken Realms. She said, you might want to check into that. So I haven't really looked into that one. So that's another mm-hmm. site that okay. also distributes audio. So that's two possible alternatives. And we will see how it shakes out in the community because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people going to be moving around. So yeah. it'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens. It will be. It will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was that was a shocker that day. Yep. But- I don't generally get worked up but that did like like I was like holy cow what is happening I was really yeah and I was guess the the, yeah yeah I guess the good thing about it was that the response was so strong from the author community (laughs) and like as Brian Cohen said on his podcast authors read things and Mm -hmm. check the TOS Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. respond and shout out to indie authors because guess what Trad authors wouldn't have had a say in that. And no. um, we're the ones that make that happen. So yeah, good for y'all. Yeah. And like all my books that are with my traditional publisher, I have no say in how mm-hmm. they're used in audio, mm-hmm. right. but like for my indie stuff. Yeah. 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 And we've learned, indie authors have learned the hard way that if we right. don't stand up for ourselves, nobody else is going nobody to. Nobody else is going to. No, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Well, do you have any news this week? Uh no, that's about it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. been another writing week, which is good mm-hmm. and getting more words in. Yeah. And weather's been beautiful. I've been going on some walks and mm-hmm. that is like, yeah, it's like 80 degrees here today. <laughs> it's, it's our amazing. early spring. Yeah. It's amazing. But uh, uh, yeah, same, same. Well, I'm not writing because I had into, fully intended to. I'm keeping my grandkids this week mm-hmm. with the other grandmother, you know, loco camp. <laughs> and uh, last loco camp, uh, I got bruised pretty badly by one of the grandkids and um, she broke her arm with the walk in the dog. So this one has been a lot better. All things considered. The other grandmother yeah. broke her arm, right? <laughs> yeah. The other grandmother broke her arm. Uh, and, and really I got bruised because I was not being careful, but uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a lot, but this one has been better except for the fact that, uh, the kids didn't, they go to school Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, the oldest goes every day, but the, the four mm-hmm. little ones go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Monday was a holiday. So we had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to, you know. Just like know. summertime. Yeah, 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 just like summertime. And uh, it was, so they were supposed to go to school today, and that's the first thing both of us said. Like, oh, it's 
school day and then one of them has straps so he's home but that's okay I mean he's that's not a big deal and I hate that he's sick but uh yesterday I realized at about 12 30 that I put my pants on backwards that morning and I don't know what is worse that I put my pants on backwards or I didn't recognize it until noon yeah 12 30 they've been on <laughs> at that point at least five hours so uh yeah so that's how it's going here but we're good we're good and it's, that's why Jamie writes comedy yeah it's always fun I mean we've had a last and we took him to the zoo and that was yeah. super fun and I mean you know we we took him to McDonald's they never go to McDonald's oh. so when we we took him to McDonald's on the way to the zoo and you would have thought we had taken them to the Ritz Carlton they were so excited and uh you know for and then my grandson took a bite of the chicken nugget and said these don't take like Chick-fil-a chicken nuggets and <laughs> <laughs> Leslie and I just went no not up to the standards no. right yeah. Oh, so, that's funny. Anyway, funny. Oh, that's but funny. that's it. That's all. I, so I haven't gotten today. I was going to write and I had to end up taking him to the doctor. And so mm-hmm. it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'll, get, I'll get back to it. But uh, it's been just more fodder, more fodder mm-hmm. for the humor, for the old, the old uh, <laughs> plotting <laughs> fodder, the old humor vault. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we should get on with the interview because it's awesome. Yes. All right. So here is Margaret. Yeah. Well, today we are really happy to talk with Margaret Lashley. Hi, Margaret. How are you? I'm great, Sarah. How are you? We are doing good. Yep. We're Thanks. great. Hi. We're so happy you're here. Thanks. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so let me read Margaret's bio and we'll get going. As a native of the Sunshine State, Margaret was weaned on weird. She puts her extensive <laughs> background in the local culture to bear in creating side-splitting mysteries jam-packed with plot twists and turns you'll never see coming. What, she, what really sets her stories apart are the quirky, flawed characters you'll no doubt recognize as people you've seen somewhere along the way. Yeah. So I love that. I do too. I do too. So how did you get into writing, Margaret? Well, it was kind of a process of elimination in college. <laughs> I determined I was no good at anything else. <laughs> so, so I became an advertising copywriter. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. That sounds familiar to me. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what about novels? How did you get into writing novels? Well, I um, d- had a pretty decent advertising career, and then mm-hmm. I went, I I um, kind of chucked my life and ran off to Europe for seven years, mm-hmm. and when I got back, um, the career that had been quite lucrative for me um, was now paying $5 a brochure, mm-hmm. and I decided, well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got to yeah. figure out something else I can do, and um, I kind of, um, ended up going to a meetup group about writing a novel and just cranked out. It took me a year and a half to crank out my first novel, Glad One. And mm-hmm. I thought I can do this. I can do this. And, uh, it, it's, it turned out to be su- somewhat successful. So I just kept rolling with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. So was that your first, is that the book in one in your your first series that yeah book? that's the very okay. first book I wrote and then um I wrote the prequel to it afterwards which is kind of a backstory of how the protagonist Val Fremden ended up being dumped into um the world that she was you know found herself in mm-hmm. and it's a little it's a little bit based on my autobiography of going to Europe for seven years and coming mm-hmm. back and the world being just you feel like a tourist in your own life. Yeah. Culture and, shock. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that you're not, you don't be- belong anymore, even mm-hmm. though it's somewhat familiar. Mm-hmm. Seven years is a long time, especially in Florida for mm. a transitory <laughs> state for pe- for everything, you know, to just be a race. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But then you have fresh eyes when you come back. Right. Yes. You see everything. Yes. Fresh jaded eyes. <laughs> 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 well, well we wiser, always... wiser but not necessarily smarter in, in the ways of the world <laughs> yeah we've all been there so yeah well yeah. we always like to ask everybody what is your definition of success my definition of success is happiness mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's the personal happiness and it's time freedom 
Yeah. yeah. If I have the time to be able to live the life that I want um, <clears throat> without um, the nagging, you know, I, I've never been able to sit in a chair very well. And so as for somebody else anyway, mm-hmm. but, you know, being your own boss is a lot of people's dreams, but when your boss is a bitch like me, you know, it's, <laughs> it can be kind of, <laughs> kind of demanding, but I've learned to relax after a while, after, after I started getting enough sales and enough uh, books underneath, under my belt to, to sit and relax. And I feel like I reached success when I could pay all my bills and still save money and only work when I really felt like it. Hmm. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great definition. And Mm -hmm. what I love though, is that it's always different with people and um, it usually changes over time too, which is funny. Yeah. 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 Well, Well, at first it was making a certain amount of money, you know, like survival money. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. but after a while too, you have, you end the quality of life factors. Once you've met those first um, things like food and shelter, you know, mm-hmm. some, you can start being luxurious about like, I'd, I'd really like to have time to go for a nice walk and not feel like I'm waste. I'm, you know, I should be writing. I should be writing. Mm-hmm. I should be writing. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you wish you'd known about writing and craft when you started? Um how underappreciated um correct grammar and is. <laughs> I did I did a lot of fretting about everything being perfect and you know mm-hmm. every and and I realized that that's not the most important thing mm-hmm. the most important thing is creating compelling characters and stories mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I imagine with your background in advertising, you know, everything had to be, you know, error free. So it's a, when you're writing yes. dialogue and description. It used to have to be like that. Now you can look at a billboard <laughs> of a major corporation. It'll have <laughs> one sentence with two errors. And it. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> it just makes me insane. Yeah. So <laughs> nobody cares about any of that anymore. No, but, no. Sadly. But, uh, yeah. But, but having to craft that in initially, you know, I mean, the grammar and the, and the advertising taught me to, to capture someone's attention immediately mm-hmm. because you only have that first line, those first mm-hmm. few seconds, and then someone's going to say, mm, boring, moving on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that background was really, a, a really a treasure for me because mm-hmm. it really did provide the skills that I think sometimes people are missing in that mm-hmm. you get caught up in that first story. I mean, it's, and it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to write my memoir and everyone will be totally interested. And mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, good luck with that, honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. but, mm-hmm. but, you know, it has to be that something in it for the other, for the reader, not for mm-hmm. yourself, mm-hmm. But okay. for the reader, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting because, I feel like advertising, our next question is what about marketing? Mm-hmm. What do you wish you'd known about marketing? But I think that, like you say, advertising has helped you with the the fiction writing as well, but did yes. it help you with the marketing aspect as well? Yes. I mean, I'm pretty good at creating ads because that was my profession at mm-hmm. one time, but, um, but it also helps with the novel writing in that the, you know, you want to tell a story, but you mm-hmm. want to tell it in a way that people want to read it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you've got to be compelling. You've got to be interesting. You've got to have that, what they call the hook mm-hmm. and that someone has to see them enough of themselves in it that they want to keep going. Mm-hmm. It's taught me to make every chapter end with some reason why you want to read the next chapter right and even sentences like that you know Mm -hmm. read the first sentence you want to read the second sentence Mm -hmm. you know that's the goal of the of the sentence each sentence is to provide you know make your reader want to read the next one Mm -hmm. advertising taught me that because I mean that sometimes we only had one sentence 
Right. Sometimes yeah. we didn't even have a whole sentence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To make every word count. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything else that you wish you had known about marketing when you got started? I mean, you've got a pretty good base, but Mm, anything else come to you like marketing fiction, maybe? Yes. Well, you know, I knew the words, but I I always worked with a graphic artist Mm -hmm. who did the visual. And though I might have a concept of it, like, oh, you know, we could have this ball bouncing and then, you know, whatever, we're on a roll Mm -hmm. or whatever. But I suck at book covers. I think I'm really great at book covers and I sabotage myself constantly with, (laughs) with like, I'm like that person, my worst client, my worst advertising client I ever had was this restaurant and he wanted to put his entire menu on the billboard as you drive by. (laughs) And And that doesn't work. Yeah, no, I mean, that's really not what we're after here. Um, But (laughs) But I feel like I do that on my book covers. It's like, there's just way too much stuff going on here. Why, you know, can't I just pick something? And then I get really insecure about it. And, and um, I have redone some of my book covers. So, so many times I'm embarrassed that maybe a lot of them, no one has ever seen. I've kind of, I gave up on them before they ever even went to print. Thank God. (laughs) But but I'm in the middle of an existential crisis now with my current book covers for my new series. I'm like, this is, I don't think this is right. My poor, my, the poor people that I work with at the, um, the co- graphics designers who do the covers, I just think they probably have the voodoo doll of me going. <laughs> <laughs> it's another email from Margaret. Yeah, Run. That's right. I think we've all been there on that. I guess. Covers are really hard. And that makes yeah. me personally feel better to know you come from advertising and they're difficult mm-hmm. for you. That gives yes. me some comfort. Yeah. yeah. Same. They're hard. They're just hard. Yeah. Oh, they're the worst. I know. I know. I, um, yeah, I'm in the middle of doing my bra. Well, not in the middle. I'm going to redo my bride's covers and I'm, I'm actually working with someone that's helping me with them because I just am not good about communicating with the artist what I want, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I can't, I'm not a very good artist because I can see something, but I can't translate that to the paper. Like I can't do that. So it's the same thing when I'm communicating to an artist, I don't know how to compute, communicate what it is I want. So I'm, I've got somebody doing that. So you're that working for me. with an interpreter, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it's like sign language. My yeah, seven's yeah. like, <laughs> oh, no, no, don't do it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. No, but, it's, yeah. it's 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 very hard, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like trying to tell someone, hey, I've got this idea for this book, and it should go like this. And then they're like, mm-hmm. But where are the words? You know, yeah. and we're mm-hmm. like, what is the graphic behind that? You know, yeah. I mean, how do we mm-hmm. convey that? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you sometimes have to just l- let people go roll with it and with and just, just cut the cover artist loose and let them give yeah. you some ideas, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I look at the other covers, you know, that are maybe like on the top 100 or whatever, but mm-hmm. you know, and they're all so different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. You know, so yeah. there's no like formula, and you don't mm-hmm. want to look just like everybody else. I mean, because I'm not, I don't feel like I'm quite the cozy you know whatever your your books don't really fit solidly in they're cozy I'd say they're cozy adjacent sort of would you agree right yeah that's what I call them cozy adjacent I mean they they fit the tropes in that you know there's not it's a it's a clean you know there's no cuss words there's no sex on the page there's no graphic violence but it's very humor forward and the Mm -hmm. mysteries aren't always about someone getting murdered there right. isn't always a body to, you know, and then the sleuth has to figure out who murdered what. There's all kinds of mysteries of life that need to be solved. Yeah. And it's very character driven um, and has more heartfelt relationships between the characters mm-hmm. than I yeah. think is the typical. It's not, it's not all about solving that mystery. Yeah, this is a my books are more about diving into a world that you wish you lived in a world that is that kind of everything's at the end is really safe kind of world that we Mm -hmm. all, you know, we all thought we were going to grow up and live in Mm -hmm. and have all of these kooky characters who, 
nobody's really ever totally evil, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, um, and you can feel good about the world at the end of it mm-hmm. kind of thing, even though people are crazy and they do crazy things, <laughs> mm-hmm. they're not intentionally evil kind of care- people. I don't know. People love each other in my novels with the broken kind of love that we've mm-hmm. all got to offer. <laughs> Yeah. 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 There is, there is no perfect ah, moment, you know, everybody mm-hmm. has their craziness right. and, and you learn to, to live it without and accept that kind of flawed existence. Hmm. I love that. And yeah. I love that, you know, that, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> so, because a lot of people don't, mm. um, yeah. yeah. And there's no yeah. size too little, cute wonderful woman here who knows everything and is gonna mm-hmm. like walk stomp in her stilettos over and solve some kind of yeah. um you know brainiac person who's gonna point out all the little things you missed and make right. you feel like oh why didn't I get that yeah you know, we were all we've all got we're all just average kind of, or you know clunking along in the world trying mm-hmm. to survive yeah and mm-hmm. and love each other and have some fun along the way I love that I Me love too. that well, what assumptions did you make at the beginning of your writing career and looking back did that turn out to be right or wrong now are you talking about the, the novel writing career mm, yes I'm sorry yes yeah, novel no, I just want to make sure yes that has like um I thought it was gonna be harder Mm. than Mm -hmm. it was for me Mm. I did not think that my first book was going to be accepted like it was Mm. I I didn't have a lot of expectations Mm. I was I was hoping you know of course but then also I didn't realize how hard it was going to be to write a book (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) um so there's the yin and yang of it because Mm -hmm. To write something that I felt really good about. I mean, Glad One took me a year and a half to write. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I didn't, ex- I didn't, I was not prepared for the terror of publishing <laughs> a novel. Yeah. <laughs> because, it's a good way to describe it. Yeah, I mean, it you were just scary. like, every, yeah. your soul is in that mm-hmm. thing. And it's like, here's my baby. Please don't call it ugly. Don't hate my baby, you know? And then you're like, you feel like you're running naked down the road with your hair on fire. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, what's going to happen now? Screaming, love me, love me. Yeah. Yeah. You're totally exposed and you feel like I'm an automatic failure. As soon as you push send, it's like the nerve of me. I pushed, I pushed print and now I'm like screwed. I can't take it. You can't take it back because it's always it's out there yeah yeah. So yeah even if you take was, it down yeah. yeah I was totally not prepared for those kind of feelings yeah yeah, yeah. I would totally wasn't prepared com- computer wise either because I mean I didn't even have an Amazon account mm. I had no Facebook account no Amazon account when I started mm-hmm. so and I had I the only thing I had knew how to do was Microsoft Word mm-hmm. and I still write in Microsoft Word so do I <laughs> and and that was the only computer program I kind of knew. Mm-hmm. And I only had survival skills in that. So I wasn't mm-hmm. prepared for how many programs I was going to have to learn and how many, you know, yeah. services there were out there to, that you really need, mm-hmm. you know, and how all the pieces fit together. I really didn't know anything except, you know, that I knew, I knew I could write mm-hmm. and I thought, well, it's, you know, I, I think I can do this and, mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Otherwise, I'd be waiting tables at a roadside truck stop <laughs> about right now. <laughs> You'd be the heroine in your own books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only they'd be a little bit tad more tragic, maybe. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. 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 Well, what's funny. the most important lesson you've learned? Oh. To believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. To believe in your own voice and to not, and to abandon this fear of missing out on, mm. you know, I'm still on my, uh, I, I have, you know, dabbed a toe here and there into some things like TikTok or whatever, mm-hmm. but I am still just the ride my old pony, which is 
I'm totally on Amazon, mm-hmm. AKU. I'm in only in the U.S. Mm-hmm. I'm on, I, I do, I'm doing the easiest thing I can for the, cause I'm just what I call the one woman shit show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I got to do all this crap. Mm-hmm. And so, so stay with Amazon and Audible and I'm just like, you know, that's my little oyster. I figure if Amazon goes down, the world has ended anyway. So <laughs> we got bigger problems to we worry got about, right? Problems than yeah, my books. Yeah. 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 So so I guess the lesson I learned is do it your way and don't feel like you've got to try everything at that everything new that comes out. I'm I'm on Facebook only. That's mm-hmm. my social media. Mm-hmm. And I I post something every day and I've built an audience for that. I have like 6,500 followers, which, you know, I, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but, but it works for me. Mm-hmm. I, I'm mm-hmm. happy to, I, I feel comfortable. Do what you feel comfortable with. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable like being out there doing videos and things like Jamie does. Um, <laughs> I just... I do. I post my little meme and I have this within the last year added that some of my memes actually include a photo of me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's like revolutionary. So so I'm taking little baby steps of of things. But yeah, yeah, but my my kids wish I wasn't like that. So my kids wish I was more like you, not (laughs) Well, you're, sharing too you're much. The Are you ever sharing? Grandma, right? I mean, I, they, want you, I am they very... want you to be a traditional grandma, and I have no kids, so I yeah. should. I can still be like crazy old lady, you know that. Yeah. But I, but uh, anyway, yeah. Keep keep, keep in your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. I guess would be the thing that I do. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be everything to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you were starting over today, what would you do differently? Um. question yeah (laughs) I I think I would not go to groups my my meeting group was we read aloud and Mm -hmm. you have people critique your work Mm -hmm. and people who know nothing can give you their opinion (laughs) just as well as people who know everything right and then you you take it to heart and you destroy your voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You destroy your dreams. Yeah. Based on strangers' opinions. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you need an ad, you do need an editor, mm-hmm. but you need someone that's on your side and not right. just some stranger. Don't, don't read your stuff in a group, mm-hmm. I guess, because it's it's terrifying and tormenting and soul destroying mm-hmm. and, and especially when you do the, comedy yes in a group yeah I mean I was really lucky yeah. the people got my sense yeah. of humor but it can it can be yeah, yeah it can be a bad situation absolutely and com- humor is so subjective and right. mm-hmm. when you've got f- you know, five or six people in a room, you mm-hmm. know, the odds are that you're going to please everybody mm-hmm. is pretty much zero, mm-hmm. even yeah. with that, even with that small of, of a group. Right. So, right. so, um, yeah, don't, don't let someone else's opinion change your mind. If you believe in yourself, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I can say that you've done that. Like you, you know, you, you knew what you wanted to write when you start. Well, my impression is you knew what you wanted to write when you started writing. Cause I met you very shortly after. Yes. You, yeah. And, and you really hung on to that. And, and that really kind of leads us to our next mm-hmm. question, which Sarah, you can go ahead and ask that if you want, but, but I, I really appreciated that about you because you, you were determined to continue to write these characters the way you saw them. And I love that. Hmm, Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we were wanting to talk to you about as well was um, writing in a, like an adjacent genre. I feel like you've kind of created your own little niche where you're, you have, do you have mystery readers and maybe women's fiction readers? I would feel like that there would be a kind of a crossover there. So how did you do that? How did you carve out this little special area? 
Well, I got a knife. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yes, all um, the details. <laughs> <laughs> I did nothing mm. except believe that the readers really don't know anything about genres. Mm-hmm. That is a good yeah. point. Yeah. They want to know broad genres. No. But other than that, no. they're not as uh, into the fine grain details as we mm-hmm. authors I mean, are. Seriously, we can't even decide what a cozy is. What's a reader going to do, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So what I did was market, use the advertising terms that I would use if I was looking for something like mm-hmm. a, a, a funny mystery for women. Mm-hmm. Or things like that. And so mm-hmm. I, I, mar- I, I don't, I don't know if any of my books are even in, um, you know, how you get the three categories you can choose. Mm-hmm. From Amazon. I just let Amazon choose them. I know it's mm-hmm. against what everybody is supposed to say, but I, for my, the first books in my series, each of my series, I choose three categories and then I just let the rest of it slide. But I, um, that's very on brand for you, Margaret. It is. It's what? It's very, very on brand, brand for you. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm the woman that follows no rules because I cannot be tamed. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like <laughs> I um it, I just I use like humorous women's fiction and yeah. amateur sleuths and things like that. Um and people find you and but I find that, you know, making contacts with on Facebook and, and answering people's messages on Facebook and I run Facebook ads um, that has helped people take a chance on me. Mm-hmm. And I use reader quote or reader um, reviews uh, mm-hmm. in my ads because they are the ones that are going to decide if you're any good or not. And, mm-hmm. and they come up with the most wonderful things that you would never think of. Like I, you know, I'm trying to describe what, how do I describe my writing? And this woman wrote deliciously screwball. I love it. I know. And I thought, Oh, can I hire you? You know, just yeah. be my campaign manager, you yeah. know, Is it my hype person. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so um, my, my best, I, I got, Early on, I got compared to Janet Ivanovich, you know, because she Mm -hmm. really was the only kind of humor comedy or Mm -hmm. humor mystery novel novelist out there that was widely known. Mm -hmm. I still get still get compared to her, but everybody uses her now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's um, I keep waiting for this one day when I'm like scrolling through, you know, some Facebook ad and I said, you know, this woman, this book is as funny as Margaret Lashley's book. <laughs> <laughs> then you know you're on to something, right? Right, then you've made it. Uh, I haven't uh, seen that yet. <laughs> well, I mean, I just think that goes back to really believing in yourself and believing in your idea of what you want to write and the stories you have in your head. And um, yeah, I mean, I I think it, you really stuck to it and you found yeah. your readers and I love that. I just feel like you, um, I know in the beginning, did you struggle in the beginning a little bit to find readers or did they just come automatically? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I struggled. I mean, yeah. getting known is the hardest yeah. part of this business, yeah. right? Yeah. But I knew that coming in from an advertising mm-hmm. background and I used right. to do a lot more you know I, I started doing the book funnel thingy um mm-hmm. things but um I'd run little contests and have giveaways I made special sunglasses and <laughs> stuff like that it's like here's a pair of my special sunglasses that I gave mm-hmm. away during my yeah. first uh but I I did a lot more engagement um but I, I um I don't know. I forgot the question now. Alzheimer's Just that you struggled, that you struggled in the beginning to find readers. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, everybody does. I mean, yes. I mean, my first year with my first book, I made like $13,000, which mm-hmm. a lot of people wouldn't consider that a struggle, Mm-mm. but, Mm-mm. but yeah. when that's your only source of income, yeah. it's a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
And it's still been my only source of income. I did not go get another job. I did Mm -hmm. not do anything. I just, I put this mindset out there that this was going to happen. I mean, I've always been pretty good at setting my mind at something and doing it. And I knew I had all the skills for it, except the computer skills Mm -hmm. and and those I've learned along the way. So Mm -hmm. yeah, no, every time, everybody, I mean, I was not like this hip home run the second year I did made enough money to live but Mm -hmm. I had like um three or four books then too Mm -hmm. so it makes a difference and then you know and then um, you just bought a house with your book money I did Mm -hmm. I mean I didn't take total cash for the house but but you're but it's the first time I've I mean I've I lived very modestly too and that was Mm -hmm. another thing so that I didn't have to be so worried about making money. I mm-hmm. lived in like this 375 square foot apartment for like <laughs> a long time <laughs> until I felt like I had, um, I, I, I could count on, you know, yes. yeah. um, a certain mm-hmm. level of income. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I am the, the queen of delayed gratification. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. And, yeah. and it takes a while to, to, I mean, I think people could learn a lesson from that. Don't expect mm-hmm. to hit it. I mean, you yeah. might, get, you might, you know, don't say, don't say you, it's not going to happen, but don't mm-hmm. bet the farm on your first book being like right. a home run and whatever. It's, um, it's a process. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a little bit of a marathon to build up a little bit of a backlist, but, but, you know, you don't have to be on a treadmill forever. Right. But you know, you need to be somewhat on a treadmill until you get at least 10 or 15 books, mm-hmm. you know, and then, you you know, I only write now two books a year, maybe three, two and a half books, you know, mm-hmm. so five mm-hmm. every two years and, uh, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. Cause you have your backlist. Yeah. So yeah. I, at that my, point. And, yeah. And you don't, don't think, oh, I'm going to write this book and it's, you know, it's going to have a life for, you know, six months or whatever. And then nothing. No, mm-hmm. glad one is still seven years later, my best selling book. Mm. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, so it doesn't have to, you know, if people think, you know, I've got to keep churning and churning and churning mm-hmm. and some new books, but you know, don't think like, I mean, it's not like the book has gone bad, you know, right. It's, I need to toss it out. It's, you know, it's it's gone rotten or something. No, I mean, that's, they're, they're just as viable today Mm -hmm. as the day you published them. Right. Mm -hmm. And every, and every, every minute, I think, I think of it this way every day, probably about 10,000 women turn 45 and they're in my audience group. (laughs) Got a new batch every so often. Every day, every day. So do you advertise to that book one and still do promotions to that book one? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And but I also advertise to the three book set of mm-hmm. the first, second, and third books. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. really my number one seller because it may, of course it costs more. So it ends mm-hmm. up with more revenue for mm-hmm. per per thing. But then the next book in line is Glad One. Mm. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I love how you've made your backlist really work for you. Well, let's talk about writing humor. Okay. Um, so, like, what's your philosophy? I mean, like, how do you, I hate this question because people ask me all the time, but I'm going to ask you, like, how do you write humor? You know, um, well, like if somebody's, yeah, I mean, what's your philosophy on that? Like, do well, you if pull you, back? If you could just you... like step in my shoes for one day, you would see how hilarious life can be. <laughs> so it's innate. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I actually have have a really hard background, and mm-hmm. so um, and my childhood wasn't the greatest, and so every day that I, for me that is is like a holiday mm-hmm. because it's easy comparatively (laughs) easy and I can choose what I want and do what I want Mm -hmm. and I have I took a lot of time to learn to see the treasure in every experience Mm -hmm. every experience Mm -hmm. every 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 experience Mm -hmm. and there is treasure there there's gold there and 
once you see it, you can also see the human in it. Yeah. 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 And, and just taking things and making them finding that in your stories. Uh, you know. Right. Well, we yeah. all have basically the same human experience in a lot of Correct. ways. Yeah. And um, we, but we all see it in a, in our kaleidoscope, mm -hmm. you know, of, mm -hmm. of things happening mm -hmm. and how you deal with things. I mean, one of my readers wrote, she says, I, how she is able to write about trauma and make it beautiful and funny is just amazing. Mm. And so my stories are, do have trauma in them, but they're not sad sack mm -hmm. trauma. Mm -hmm. They are really my attempt to provide, to show the healing that I've had, that the way you can look at something and see the gift in it. Mm -hmm. And so I do that in my stories. Um, people write and say, say, you know, like you helped me through my mom's mm -hmm. death, you know, mm -hmm. and help me keep going. And, and you just think, Oh my gosh, that's, that's, I mean, to me, that's what some of the most rewarding stuff mm -hmm. is, yeah. and, um, yeah. is, is how you've, you've touched people and you like right. related stories. Um, so the humor for, for me isn't just slapstick, but I will take slapstick any day of the week yeah. <laughs> if I can get it. Right. But there's I'll all grab that low hanging humor. fruit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> low hanging fruit, high hanging fruit. You know, I'll even go skydiving for fruit, you know. Are, whatever. There, are there things you wouldn't do uh, with your for humor? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would not um belittle somebody mm -hmm. to that about something that was a genuinely painful issue mm -hmm. for them you know mm -hmm. someone who's not ready for it mm -hmm. you know somebody who's not that tough kind of character who can take that mm -hmm. whatever I would not do that right you know? right yeah. yeah I mean I think that there are um no means. Uh, yes. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be mean. Mean. Yeah. Mean yeah. spirited. Yeah. Mean spirited. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because, yeah, I mean, we got enough of that crap Ooh. in our lives, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> you, we don't need to read about it, right? T right. Turn on the TV. It's full of mean spirited, mm -hmm. hateful people. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm providing an escape from mm -hmm. that. You right. know, I remember when the TV was like people had like morals and they actually genuinely cared about people. Yeah, yeah, when they cared about yeah other people, right? Yeah. I'm providing mm -hmm. that old fashioned escape where yeah, you know, it's not so. It's kind of like a little bit. I love Lucy meets my name is Earl meets you know like um <laughs> like just craziness, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's craziness, the, but with yeah. a leaves yeah. you with like a warm feeling. I guess yes, like. that, 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 that you you like genuinely like the people that are involved in the story. That's right, right you know. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they can, you know, even though they are all fatally flawed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that because oh. mm -hmm. I, one of the, one of my pet peeves with cozy mysteries is that they have quirky characters, but the only reason they're there is just because they're quirky. And mm -hmm. so how do you write interesting quirky characters, but that they're relatable? How do you do that? You find a way that they need each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. a way that they that they support each other and they complete a piece of the search for and I'm not talking about so much solving the mystery but the mm -hmm. search right. for wholeness mm -hmm. in the characters themselves mm -hmm. sometimes they make fun of the other character because it's what's missing in them too mm -hmm. and and they, they can you know or they can bounce some of their own um, self denigrating thoughts off onto somebody else, but realize that's what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. The, the quirky, like when you said that about completing the, it, they complete the picture, mm -hmm. like, they you know, do, the quirky they do both. Yeah. They complete the picture and, um, but they do serve a purpose. They're not just there yes, to be. No, no they, 
They are Mm -hmm. individuals on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the person who's probably you're never going to see again is there for a purpose, Mm -hmm. but they are also are not just there, you know, as like the person I can blame for this or whatever, (laughs) you know, like who cares? They're not really a person anyways. I don't like that because I think that, you know, you should actually get an image of that person in your mind Mm -hmm. and realize that some of their motivations behind what they've done or what or haven't done, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that because I I don't know, like I said, I don't think anybody is completely innocent and pure and wonderful Mm -hmm. or completely horrible and bad and, and deserving some kind of horrid death, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, how would you do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Keep, keep going. I was just going to say, but together they complete the picture of the story, but they also help complete some of the main characters. You you know, you find out things about the main characters that you've always wondered. Yes. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So they reveal things, Mm -hmm. maybe about the character's past or things like that. Exactly. Exactly. So my question was, how do you do that over a series? Because you have recurring characters. Yeah. Years aren't standalones. So yeah. when you bring somebody yeah. in, do you have a plan and say, okay, I know this person is still going to be around in book four or do Absolutely you just Absolutely not. <laughs> I was say, Absolutely not. If you answer yes, I'm going right? to get off the Davey's going to go cry. I'm freaking hijacked by these characters. You know, I'm sitting here writing, oh, well, this guy's just going to walk in, you know, and do this. And then it's like, oh my God, now he's the main character. Get out of my life, buddy. I didn't want you in here. But 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 they do, um, you know, take over. It sounds yeah. Like. Sometimes they take over because what it is, I think, is you've got this thought that you can't express with somebody else, mm-hmm. and that this person has legs, as they say in the mm-hmm. industry. But they've got they've got more to say. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I, I wrote this guy Farrell Fingerman. <laughs> it was this. <laughs> I love the names. I mean, the names are just hilarious. Farrell Finkerman, of course, is an ambulance chasing attorney. Of course he is. <laughs> he, yeah. wears a, he wears a light blue leisure suit stained with 50 decades of, you know, coffee and all that <laughs> other stuff. And uh, I thought, you know, he's going to plague Val in one of these books and that'll be the end of him. Oh, no. Hmm. That man would not go away. <laughs> he's in almost every, I mean, he's as, I think, in every book since he had debuted. Oh, and, but he's just got so much juice. The guy's mm-hmm. got juice, you know, mm-hmm. you got to keep squeezing it. Mm-hmm. So, so um, you know, some one of the few characters I wrote in that I thought, oh, why'd I do that? Mm-hmm. Was to give Val a dog. I know people love dogs. Mm-hmm. I was traumatized by dogs as a child. Dogs are are scary for me. And but I thought I'm going to deal with this. And then six tricks, I had De- Val get over her fear of dogs and everything. And then they got a dog. And people want to know more about the dog. But the dog to me is so insignificant mm-hmm. to the to the juicy human saga going mm-hmm. on that it's really hard for me to find a place to work that in. It, it, it's, yes. It seems irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And I know that's probably, I don't mean to say that pets are irrelevant, but I'm just saying to the story, yeah, to the story of Val and her characters, it's, it's, it's really not where I'm going. There's plenty of pet cozies out there you can Mm -hmm. read about and Mm -hmm. pets are awesome, but pets don't in my book world don't solve crimes or do anything like that, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? Yep. Yeah. So you can't have the same like emotional resonance that you could with a yeah. character, a different type of character. Yes. They're yeah. sweet. Dogs and cats yes. and pets are sweet and fun to have. Yeah. Mix, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But after, you know, they've chewed up your favorite pair of shoes and other mm-hmm. yeah. comic relief. What, what are they going to really do? You know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, this has been amazing. And I will tell y'all that. Her books are hilarious. I mean, they are so funny. And um, so you do just such a great job of capturing um, the tone of, uh, you know, of what you're trying, you know, the the, the world that you've built. Thank and you. um, yeah, they're great. So, but tell us what you think the best thing you've done to set yourself up for success has been. 
um, giving myself the time to mm. do. Mm-hmm. I I lived on my savings, mm. which I know not everybody can do, but mm-hmm. I I lived on my savings for a year and gave myself time to actually do the the work that needs to be do, done to get do a book and 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 to I believe that you have something to say and that it's unique. Mm-hmm. You know, but mm-hmm. don't do your memoir, please. Nobody cares. <laughs> um you that's your that's the memoir book. Oh. I have one. Believe me, I speak uh, from experience. Yeah. I have one that's like in pieces. The mem I can I kind of uh compare it to like making pancakes, you know. Yeah. That first pancake is a freaking mess. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because you're tr- you're trying to get the griddle the right thing, the batter the right way, everything's the right way. Mm-hmm. And you're a mess. You're trying because when writers who when we write, we are he- trying to heal some part of ourselves yeah. <laughs> in some ways, right? And mm-hmm. so when you're writing that memoir, it's a mess. Mm-hmm. And so do what you need to do to get your, your that out of you so that you can go on and project some other things into other characters that aren't isn't so specific to you mm-hmm. right. you know mm-hmm. and create a world that you would enjoy living mm-hmm. in create characters you would enjoy being mm-hmm. with because yes. these people are your family from yep. now on and yep. you're going to spend a lot of time with them yes. right you, sure if are. you're writing yeah. a book you're going to yes. be with those characters a lot Mm-hmm. And if you write a series, you could be spending decades with these people. Right. So you better, you know, write write what you want to hang around. To spend with. your time with, yeah. Yeah. That's such wrote, a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wrote two um, thrillers mm-hmm. and I did not like living in that world. Mm-hmm. And I quit doing that. Yeah. I wrote mm-hmm. that after the Val series and I thought, I'm going to write thrillers now because everybody's writing thrillers. And it's like, I wrote two of them and I was like, I'm going to either kill myself or Mm -hmm. go back to writing something that brings me joy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's me. I don't have enough of a a shell, I guess. (laughs) I don't know. Thick enough shell. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. To, and I, you know, to, to protect myself from feeling bad about Mm -hmm. that. I Mm -hmm. want to feel good in, in the world that I spend, you know, hours and hours and hours a day yeah you know talking to sometimes these are the only pe- so-called people mm-hmm. that i'm gonna communicate with mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. you know right. and then well, even if you're not writing you're thinking about it and mm-hmm. so yeah working out yes. plot points and dwelling on it so it's important i right. get it yeah right yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this has just been fantastic. It's been mm-hmm. so much fun to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Um, where can people find out more about you and your books? Well, you can visit my website if you care to at margaretlashley.com, but mostly visit me on Facebook, Margaret Lashley Dash Author, and on Amazon. You can get most of my books in ebook, print, paperback, audiobook, and you just look up Margaret Lashley. That that's like Ashley with an L on the front, L A S H L E Y. So Margaret Lashley and um author on Amazon and you'll see I've got I don't know four or five series to take a look at and so I hope that you will give it a shot Mm -hmm. that is perfect all right yeah well Well, thank you so much thank you so much oh thanks for having me I really appreciate it yeah I wasn't as nervous as I thought it was going to (laughs) be good good Yeah, so we'll have all those links in the show notes and those will be at wish I'd known for writers.com. And if you want to support the podcast, you can go to that same link slash support. So thanks for being here and we'll see everybody next week. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the wish I'd known then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.